Hey, welcome to the video guys. On this video, I will be talking about determining the directional angle for a vector and the vector and finding the vector components. So you should be able to determine the angle for a vector and we'll use that angle to describe its direction and determine the vertical and horizontal components of the vector. So I just want to go back real quick and remind you that in the last video we talked about finding what a vector was, finding all the basic parts of a vector and we had a vector in standard position looking like this xy so if we had any vector in this coordinate plane we would just draw the vector from the origin and we'd have our x and y coordinates from here to here we could also find the magnitude of that vector so let's let's call this vector v and we could find the magnitude of vector v by doing the pythagorean theorem so we just draw here we do the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared. We know that there are two parts to any vector, that there is magnitude and direction. So we need to find the direction. So I'm going to show you how to find the direction. And then what if we're given the magnitude and we're given the direction and we want to find x and y? So we'll show you how to do that in this video. So let's take a look at, at this here. My angle for my right triangle here is well, we're just going to call this angle theta and then this right here is going to be my magnitude magnitude of V and when I'm doing this um, we're just going to use so we're going to use Sokotoa so we're going to use the right triangle trig now I, I want you to just you know this all of these problems come down to two things two big strategies the first strategy is draw your vector if you draw the vector, you won't be lost as to where your angle is. And your angle that we're normally going to find is always going to be, this theta is always going to be between the vector, um, between the vector and the x-axis. This is the easiest way to, easiest way to find it. And we're going to take that we'll see in a few minutes here. Where we're going to take a few moments. Where we're going to take. We might have to do something to that. Um, and that's pretty much it. Make sure you're in the right, right quadrant. Uh, then second, everything comes down to right triangle trigonometry. So as long as you make sure you're using right triangle trigonometry somewhere, and a lot of times if you've seen it as Sokotoa, sine, cosine tangent, uh, you'll be fine. So just remember these two rules. Draw the vector, Sokotoa. Draw the vector, Sokotoa. As long as you remember that, you know, these formulas, you don't really have to deal with the formulas. You already know Pythagorean theorem. You know how to use sine, cosine, tangent. Just go back to that stuff and use it. So we'll see, though, how these formulas come about. So here is your magnitude. We use theta as our direction. Theta, notice that this is y here, right? And this is x here. These are called my vertical and horizontal components. To find theta, we would use Sokotoa. I already drew my triangle, right? So use Sokotoa. Now we already know, we're going to assume that we know what, um, we're going to assume that we know x and y here, okay? Because we know x and y. So to find x and y, we're going to use opposite over adjacent. So let me let me erase this here so we can see how we get that. So opposite over adjacent is tangent. So tangent theta is the opposite over the adjacent. When we solve for theta, we have to find the inverse tangent. Okay, so that's it. That's all we do. We've got this formula here for magnitude, this formula here for direction or the or directional angle. Now, if we wanted to find the component, and we already knew what this was, we would say that the angle, the cosine of theta is the adjacent over hypotenuse. And then we would solve for x, and we would get x equals the 
magnitude of the vector times the cosine of theta. Now this should look kind of familiar to you because if we were talking about the unit circle, we know that the cosine of the angle is the x coordinate in the unit circle. And that's how we can remember that x goes with cosine. And we also know if we did if we solved it for y that y in the unit circle goes with sine. So these are our formulas and I'll I'll erase everything that's really not going to be a formula for us. So this was how we solved it, so I'll erase this part. Okay. And this is how we solved it, so erase that part. These are our formulas. So let me show you a few examples of how we would use these formulas and how we would solve some problems. Okay. Here's my first example. We have uh, the vector v equals 3, 5, and we want to find the magnitude and direction. So magnitude, we'll just throw in, a, you know, throw in our formula. So the magnitude of v is the square root of 3 squared plus 5 squared. So we're using Pythagorean theorem. And we're going to get about 5.8. Now, these I'm just going to use my calculator for. So make sure you're using your calculator. Theta is the inverse tangent of y over x, 5 over 3. That gets to be about 59 degrees. Now, if we look at the, gra at the picture here, it's right here. Here's my angle theta, and here's my magnitude. It looks about 59 degrees. So uh, we're about right. Okay, so let's take a look at example number two. Okay, example number two is negative four, negative three, and we're gonna find the magnitude. So the magnitude, we'll call this vector u. So magnitude of u, what is the magnitude of u? I know the magnitude of me. <laughs> so anywhere, anyway, bad joke, here we go. Um, we use the magnitude here and we get about five. We know it's five actually, it's because it's a three, four, five triangle. So I'm gonna draw this here. Here's theta. We use the formula here, inverse tangent of y over x. Just go ahead and drop the negatives. You don't need the negatives and I'll show you why in just a second. Uh, we get 36.9 degrees, about. Well, you know what, here's the problem with saying that our directional angle is 36.9 degrees. If I told somebody to have a magnitude of, you know, have a magnitude of 5 and a, and a vector directional angle of 36.9, they're going to assume that since 0 degrees starts here, they're going to assume that 36.9 degrees is right here. Well, that is 36.9 degrees. So we have to be very careful on how we describe this angle. We are always going to describe this angle, unless we talk about bearing, which I'll talk about in the next time, next example. Zero degrees here, all the way to our vector. So notice here, to get all the way to our vector, I have to add 180 degrees. So I'm going to add 180 degrees to that. I'm going to get 216.9 degrees. This is my directional angle. So don't forget, you might have to add 180, you might have to subtract 90, but as long as you draw the picture, use Sokotoa, you'll know where your angle is and how much you have to add or subtract. All right, let's look at the third and final example. All right, here's example three. We have a vector with a magnitude of 10 and a angle of 125 degrees. I drew it here. The angle is 125 degrees because remember we start at zero and go this way, 125 degrees. Okay, so what we could do is we could draw a triangle. I said if you would draw a right triangle, we get this angle here. This would be my angle theta, which would be 55 degrees because we add them to get 180. And we could find x and y because that's what we're finding in this case. We're finding the vertical and the horizontal components. Well. This is different than the other ones because you can actually use 125 degrees in our formula. They do not care what the angle is. So we're going to say 10 times the cosine of 125 degrees. We're going to put that, throw that in our calculator, and we are going to get negative 5.7. We'll do the same thing for y, 10 times the sine of 125 and we get 
And just like that, we are finished. Okay, so you found the X and the Y components. They should match up in terms of our, um, our coordinates, right? Negative five, so I didn't really draw this to scale here. Negative five and up 8.2. So my vector should actually be some way, somewhere, you know, somewhere up here, right? It's a little longer there. Okay, um, I was wrong. This isn't the last. I got one more example because uh, we've got to know something a little bit about bearing. So let's do one more example. Okay, so in example four, you're going to notice here that it's slightly different because we're going to talk about something called bearing. And bearing is just a different type of a different type of um, angle use that you, is used in 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 uh, like boats and stuff where we do navigation. And so when we talk about bearing, it looks like this. Bearing starts zero degrees here and goes clockwise instead of starting zero degrees at our x-axis and going counterclockwise. So in, in my fourth example here, I'm going to have a vector that has a uh, magnitude of five miles per hour and a bearing of 120 degrees. So a bearing of 120 degrees looks like this. I'm going to start here at zero. I'm going to go this way until I get 120 degrees. Notice here, this is 90 degrees in bearing. Then I'm going to go 30 more degrees, and that'll be my 30, not drawing a scale here. 30 degrees will be my angle from here to my vector. So bearing goes this way. But we use the same formula. So x equals 5 times the cosine of 30 degrees, and we're going to get about 4.3. Okay, again, I didn't draw it to scale, uh, miles per hour. And y is going to be 5. Well, hold on. I'm going to be careful here because our y is negative. It's down here. So we're going to make sure we put negative 5 times the sine of 30 degrees. And that's going to give us negative 2.5. Okay? All right. So here are, here's my last example. I want to give you a couple of practice problems. So uh, if you'd like to go and do the practice problems, I'll have them on the whisk later. Or you can ask me in class what the answers are, and I'll give them to you. So let me put up a couple of practice problems here for you. And then just use the formulas like we did in the, in the examples. Here are the practice problems. See you later, alligator. In a while, crocodile.